Well, good morning, everybody. It is good to see you all and welcome you all to Drimminus. Um, very particularly Sunday school boys and girls and Bible class young folks. Um, great to have you helping lead us in worship this morning. And if mums and dads are here, particularly on that account, or extended circles of grannies and grandmas and aunties and uncles, um, you're particularly welcome with us as we meet for worship this morning. A few things to mention um, at this stage. One is that this is the last Sunday morning of Sunday school um, until September. But, and I, and I always put this in as a caveat at this stage, um, that is not church over for the summer. And we love having our children and our young people with us um, every Sunday. And um, when you're not away on your holidays, it's great to have you here. Church is at 1030 through to the end of June. And then in July and August, we meet for worship at 10 on a Sunday morning. And so that's one to keep in mind for the coming weeks. After our service here in church this morning, there's tea and coffee and I think strawberries and cream in the hall. For, yep, so I'm getting nods. Um, for everybody in the hall, and you're very, very welcome to go through and enjoy that. Now, one or two other things to mention. Secondary school age, well, P7s and secondary school age young people are all welcome at our house tonight. Um, so come along to that, half past seven until nine. Um, I'm sure you can take a break from whatever revision or has to be done. Um, please come our way. If you're P7, finishing P7, or you're in secondary school, come our way at half past seven tonight. There's a session meeting tomorrow night at eight. Elders, take note of that. Tuesday night, we have our last holiday Bible club planning meeting at 7, and, and we're grateful for all the help, and we need all the help. Um, holiday Bible club starts on the Monday the 17th, so that's not tomorrow, but Monday week. There's a, a sheet in the vestibule if you'd like to help us with juice and biscuits any night for um, the children at holiday Bible club. Sign up if you want to help there. Then on Wednesday night, there is... One more planning meeting for our secondary school nights, and they're called, that's called Trilogy. So Wednesday night, there's a planning meeting. It's being planned at Red Rock. So the meeting's at Red Rock on Wednesday night. We do need helpers um, to look after the teenagers, and please, um, if you could help us with that, speak to Willie Dunn, or come along on Wednesday night as we plan for that. One other announcement to invite you to. Next Saturday night, there's a special event taking place up at Red Rock. Nathan and Beth are going to Mozambique with OMS later in the summer. There's a, a barbecue next Saturday night at 7. There'll be food, and then there'll be just a brief half-hour program commissioning them for their summer trip to Mozambique. There'll be several other OMS groups. We'll be hearing a wee bit about where all the young people are going. That's open to everybody, so come along next Saturday night. Um, 7 o'clock at Red Rock, there'll be food and then a brief programme after that. Um, we'd love to have you over um, to encourage Beth and Nathan. And finally, another date for the diary. On the 23rd of June, which is two weeks from today, Daniel Ballantyne will be licensed um, as a probationer for the Christian ministry. He's doing his assistantship, serving in New Mills, but he'll be back here for his licensing service. There's a sheet out beside the offering plates if you'd be willing to help with food on that evening. Um, sandwiches, scones, tray bakes. Um, sign the sheet if you'd be willing to help us with supper for the evening of Daniel's installation. Sorry, not installation, um, licensing on that evening. Those are all the announcements. Um, I think those are all the announcements, but I have a funny suspicion that might not be all the announcements, boys and girls, because there's a very special event happening very, very soon. I wonder, are there any more announcements?
are you? Possibly you could help me. Could I help you? Possibly. Okay. The name is Bond. Joshua Bond. The coordinates I received from Q brought me here. Q? Yes, I asked him to provide some equipment to help with the mission. I'm sure we'll need plenty of weapons before the big day. Sorry, I can't say much more you understand. It's top secret. Jericho. Jericho? Uh, there we go again. Oh, sorry. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. It's going to happen yet, but I do know that I'm going to receive all of the instructions that I need from the top. Still, I need to pull together the best team possible. And if asked if we're going to be able to put our plans into action on the 17th. The 17th? What's happening on the 17th? Never tried it. <laughs> we'll try again. I, I, would I need instructions? Do you reckon? I've never succeeded. I didn't even get a practice go. <laughs> oh! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! When the trumpets blew, the wall of Jericho <laughs> was to fall. <laughs> Come and join us on the 17th at half past six, boys and girls, and you will get more information before you leave this morning. Thank you, Alison, and all the rest of the leaders. You needed to employ a proper cornet blower. No. That was the last and the best of all the announcements. We really are looking forward to Holiday Bible Club. But we're here this morning for something else. And boys and girls, before we start, I want to say something to you, and I want to say something to the mummies and daddies. I know that you've all done lots of shows at school. Some of you have done other performances with music and sport and public speaking and all of that. Do you know what? This morning's not about any of that. It's not a show. Um, mums and dads and grannies and grandas who have come here, we're glad you're here, and I know you're here to see some little people take part this morning. But we're here to worship God. This isn't actually about these little people entertaining you. This is about these young people helping us collectively to worship God. And we're going to do that um, as we sing, as we pray, as we listen to God's word. That's what we do on a Sunday morning when we gather for church. And these guys are going to help us do that this morning, boys and girls. So it doesn't matter if you get a word wrong here or there. That's not what this morning's about. It's about worshipping God and telling him that we love him. We're going to do that, first of all, as we sing, God is good, 
God is great. He's the one who did create everything that there is by his power. And we're going to stand as we worship God together. seats together. Thank you, praise group. That's um, as adaptable as you've ever had to be in I don't know how many years, so thank you so much. Boys and girls, when we come to church, we sing to praise God and tell him how wonderful we know that he is. We also come to talk to him when we pray, and we're going to do that now, and Abigail from the Bible class is going to lead us all in prayer. So do you want to do one, two, three before Abigail gets up to the front? You ready? And then we'll be ready to pray. One, arms out like airplanes. Two, get rid of our wiggles. And then three, let's pray. Thanks, Abigail. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all together for our Children's Day service today. We thank you for all your goodness and the blessings you have given us. Most of all, we thank you that you love us and that you gave the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Because he died for us, we can know the joy and happiness of being forgiven and made new. We pray that you would draw near to each one of us this morning as we worship and praise you. Thank you for our Sunday school and Bible class teachers who come every week to teach us about the good news of Jesus and God's love and faithfulness. We pray that you bless them for their service and give them rest over the summer. We pray that everyone taking part today would know your presence and strength and everything said and done would honour you. Lord, as we finish Sunday school and Bible class for the summer, we pray that you would help us to keep walking with you daily. Help us to trust and obey you with our eyes fixed on Jesus. For we ask all these things in his name. Amen. Thank you, Abigail. Now, our P6s in Sunday school um, have been enjoying learning about Moses all through um, this winter. And so instead of getting them all up to the front, we're going to watch and listen as we hear um, the first part. There's going to be two parts. This is the first part of the P6s of Dramina Sunday School 
on their Moses journey, the Moses epic. Thanks for watching. For more, but there's going to be more. Um, I know our P6s love um, dramatizing and acting out the story, guys. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll hear a bit more about Moses in a wee minute. When I came into church this morning, um, there was a sea of boys and girls got up to the front and they were singing. They're going to sing again for us all now. Um, two songs, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, and then Never Give Up. And boys and girls, all I say is, can you sing as well as you did earlier on? And the mummies and daddies will really, really, really enjoy your singing. Um, so, Lord, I lift your name on high and never give up. These are two of the songs that the boys and girls sing on a Sunday morning in Sunday school.
Brilliant, guys. Thank you. You can all sit down again. Super. You've been singing. Um, so what was the line you were just singing? What was the last three words you sang? Never give up because God is always there. He's by our sides. Well, the way that I know and hear from God that he's there with me is when I open my Bible and read what he's telling me. It's no use me just saying, oh, God's there somewhere. That's not a lot of use. I need to know that he's there, that he's speaking, that he's got something to say. And so we're going to listen to the Bible and Faith is going to read to us from Mark chapter 10, verse 35 to 45. The God who is here has got something to say. Thanks, Faith. Mark chapter 10, verse 35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He, re uh, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, said Jesus. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord over them, and, the high, and their high officials exercise authority over them. But not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and, whoever, and whosoever wants to be first must be slave for all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for many. Thanks, Faith. Now, P4 and 5 Sunday School classes um, are going to help us think a wee bit about Jesus' hands. So, P4s and 5s, um, I'm going to hand over to you. God gave us hands to build up, to show friendship and love. But we misused our hands, not to build up, but to break down and destroy. Not to show friendship, but mistrust. Not to show love, but hatred. Jesus came into the world and he used his hands to spread healing and love. But we took his hands and nailed him to the cross. There he died. But he came back to life and offers life and love to everyone. Some accept him, others turn him away. Will you put your life in Jesus' hands? Thank you very, very, very much. Now, if you cast your mind back, a wee while ago we were on the first part of Moses, um, and Moses had run away off after having killed a man. We're going to hear the rest of the story. One day Moses was tending sheep when he was on Mount Sinai. He couldn't believe his eyes. A bush of flames he had not burning up. What is this? Moses! Moses! Who's talking? What's happening? Moses, here I am. I am the Lord your God, God be my Lord.
Moses went back to Egypt, but Pharaoh would not let his slaves be Israelites go. Each time Moses asked Pharaoh to let them go, he said, No. Ten plagues rained down on Egypt. The Nile turned to blood. The city was infested with frogs, the gnats, the flies, the livestock died, people suffered boys, locusts destroyed crops, then darkness covered the land. Finally, God allowed for every firstborn son to die, unless the blood of the sacrificed lamb on the Jordan. Israelites obeyed God's will, and doing so, they were saved. Distraught Pharaoh let the people go. Boys and girls, one of the things that we do every Sunday, um, and we, we take a minute, usually before you go out to children's church, now you're not going out today, but we take a wee moment and we pray for other people, and we're going to do that now, um, and Reuben is going to help us um, as we pray for other people. Do you want to do one, two, three again, just so we don't footer? One, two, shake out the wriggles, and then three. Thanks, Reuben. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for listening to us as we bring our prayers for other people to you. Today we thank you and pray for all our teachers. We pray particularly for teachers in our schools who love, love you and run our scripture union groups. Help all of us as young people to set a good example in school as we follow Jesus. We thank you too for our teachers and leaders in church. We pray for our Sunday school teachers and youth leaders. Help them as they prepare lessons and talks from your word, the Bible. We pray for all of those who will go on teams and camps this summer in Northern Ireland and all around the world. By the power of the Holy Spirit, lead boys and girls and young people to hear the truth and trust in you this summer. Lord, when it comes to exam results, help us all to trust you with our futures. We thank you that you promise to work things together for the good of those who love and trust you. Finally, we remember this morning those whose circumstances are more difficult than ours. Help those who are lonely to know that you're close to them and calm the fears of those who are worried today. All these things we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Thanks, Reuben. Right, we're all going to sing again together. We're going to sing Better Is One Day with Jesus than a thousand on my own. And the boys and girls had sung about not giving up because God is with us. Those of us who've gone on along the journey in life a wee bit further discover that yes, there are two ways to live, either walking, following, trusting in Jesus and realizing that that is the best way to live or there's the going our own way. And this is a song that reminds us of that. And better is one day with Jesus than a thousand going my own way. It's true um, and these are wonderful words um, to remind us of that as we sing. Better is one day with Jesus. And we're all going to stand as we sing.
together. Now, P7s um, are going to talk to us for a little minute um, about the power of the Lord Jesus. Thanks, guys. The power of Jesus. During the P7 year, the class looked at a series called The Power of Jesus. We would like to share with you four stories and some key lesson points for us all to consider. The story shows Jesus' power over illness, death, and creation. Many people asked Jesus for help during his time on earth. One man was a Roman centurion and Capernaum who displayed an amazing faith and asked Jesus to heal his ill servant. The story can be found in Luke 7. The centurion was important and had authority. He was in control of around a hundred soldiers, but he recognised that Jesus was more important and had more authority. The centurion felt so unworthy to approach Jesus that he sent friends to plead his cause. Jesus showed mercy to the soldier when he asked for help. The Roman centurion believed that Jesus could heal his servant, so he asked and the servant was healed because of Jesus' power over illness. Jesus commended the Roman centurion for his faith. Some key lesson points for us to consider are Jesus is always ready to help when we need him. We should pray over the, over the big things and over the small things. We can pray out loud or silently. There is a limit to what people can do, but Jesus, the Son of God, can do anything. He has authority. Distance is no barrier to Jesus. We need to have faith in the power of Jesus. The second story. Jesus used his power to overcome death when he raises a widow's son to life. The passage is from Luke 7. One day, Jesus and his disciples went to a town called Nain. Lots of people followed them. After all, this was a man who could heal the sick and perform many miracles. As we were walking into the town, they saw a big group of people carrying a dead man. His mum was crying because he was her only son and she was a widow. When Jesus saw her crying, he felt very sad and walked over to her and said, Don't cry. Then he touched the coffin of the dead man and everyone stopped moving. Jesus said to the dead man, Get up. And the man sat up and started talking. Jesus then gave the man back to his mum. Everyone was really surprised and scared. They all praised God and said that Jesus was a great prophet sent by God. News about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Key lesson points for us to think about. Jesus has power over death. Jesus cares about our pain and wants to comfort us. He is filled with love and compassion for us. When Jesus does something amazing, it's important to praise God and give him thanks. Not only did Jesus have power over death, but he also defeated death by rising from the dead. And he gives us eternal life so that we can live forever with him. In the third lesson, we explored the account of Jesus calming the storm. The passage is Mark, Mark 4, thir verses 35 to 41. And the verses give us great assurance that God is in control over all things. Jesus and his disciples had been traveling around in the countryside, and Jesus had been teaching and performing many miracles. When evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they climbed up into a boat and set sail to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was very tired, so he was sleeping at the back of the boat, but with his head on a pillow. Suddenly, a fierce storm came up. High waves came, high waves came up, up, and the boat boat began to to fill with water. The disciples were afraid and went and woke Jesus. Teacher, they shouted, "Don't you care that we are going to drown?" For them to wake Jesus up up and tell 
told him that they were, were about to drown, and tells us that it was indeed a terrible storm. When Jesus woke up, he spoke to the wind and the waves, Silence, be peace, or be still. Suddenly the wind stopped blowing, and the sea became calm. He turned to his disciples and said, Why are you afraid? Do you not have faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the winds and the wa- wa- the wind and the waves obey him. The disciples thought they might die, but it wasn't until after the storm that after the storm that they were truly afraid. They were in the awe of one who could control even nature, so they bowed down to him and worshipped him. They came to learn that no matter how bad a situation seemed, the first thing they needed to do was turn to Jesus. Some of the key lesson points to consider are Jesus has power and control over all things, including creation. We can take our worries and struggles to Jesus. He can calm the storms in your life. Even when things seem chaotic, there is always a way to find peace. If you take Jesus with you day by day, he'll be there with you in the storm. When you face problems on the sea of life, do you have Jesus in the boat with you? In the fourth and final story, Jesus healed a suffering woman on the way to see the daughter of Jairus. The passage can be found in Mark 5. The lady had been sick and bleeding for 12 years. Therefore, socialising would have been out of the question as she was considered unclean. She must have been very lonely and over the years consulted many doctors about her condition, but all to no avail. However, the woman had faith that Jesus could do what no one else had been able to do, heal her. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. There were loads of people, but Jesus felt her individual touch and turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. By just touching Jesus' cloak, she was instantly healed. Her life was back on track, and the prejudice that she used to suffer was behind her. Some key lesson points for us to remember. Jesus is part of heal. What is impossible for people is possible for God. Jesus is never too busy to hear and respond to your needs. We can't touch Jesus' cloak, but we can tell him in prayer about our problems and worries. He is kind, loving, and able to help. Jesus is also the only one who can heal us and save us from our sins. Even though people try lots of things to be good enough to get to heaven, it is only by putting our faith in Jesus that we are saved. Guys, thank you for journeying us through um, a reminder of who Jesus is and all that Jesus has done. Now, the boys and girls are going to sing one more song for us. Um, it's called Power in the Blood. It's an old song. And it's a reminder from what the P6s were doing in their drama about a lamb who died so that the people didn't have to when they escaped from Egypt. Come on ahead, boys and girls. Come on up to the front um, while I explain what you're singing. Um, Whenever we sing about there being power in the blood, we don't mean that the blood that's dripping in your veins is somehow magical, or that the blood that ran in Jesus' veins was somehow magical. It's not. Jesus' life blood is is his life and his death. When Jesus died, his life for us, there is power in that to change us. So the boys and girls are going to sing um, words that you'll recognize, some of you who are a wee bit older, and they're going to sing it for us. Thanks, guys.
down, find a seat. And for the last few minutes this morning, I need you all to get, get yourselves comfy. And I need to get you with your best listening ears on. Have you got your best listening ears on? Yeah? Okay. So, our new friend, James, who's come to our church, he's going to be with us and get to know us and help us learn more about God. And so I'm going to pass over to James and he's going to talk to you for five or ten minutes just as we finish this morning. So if you all listen really well to James and then after that um, we'll be getting our prizes. Okay, James. Thank you. Hello boys and girls. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Great. So my name is James and I am the new assistant here at uh, Geminis um, and in Red Rock as well. And it's just so good to be with you all. And it's so good to hear about all of what you've been learning and how you've led today. It's been brilliant. It's just been brilliant. There's four or three pictures that are going to come up on the screen. And I want, to tell, I, I want you to tell me what they have in common. What are these three pictures? What could you think? Yes. Attention. That's close. Close. Say it again, sorry. Angry, that's close to. Yeah. Go for it. Moody, that is very close, and I'm going to give it to you. It's people being bossy. Who, who loves a bossy boots? Nobody loves a bossy boots, right? If you're playing a game and the person's just saying, oh, do this, do that, do this, don't do that, don't do that, you're not allowed to do that. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? It's a bit annoying to be playing a game with a bossy boots. In the passage we read earlier, uh, James and John, who are Jesus' disciples, they came to Jesus and they asked him a question. They asked him, Jesus, could we sit at the right and left hand in your kingdom? And so they wanted this, this high position. If you think of a podium and there's you know one, two, and three, and there's the person at the top, so that's Jesus. They want to be Jesus' left and right-hand man. They want, to be, they want to be really, really high up in his kingdom. And his disciples, they heard James and John coming up to Jesus and asking this. And they became annoyed. They became frustrated. Why did they become frustrated? Because, because they wanted to be in that position too. And so Jesus thought he would take this as an opportunity to teach his disciples a lesson. So Jesus teaches them what greatness really looks like. James and John, they wanted to be great, but Jesus wanted them to know what greatness really looks like. And so he said that he, he, he compared the, 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 the leaders of the day, the rulers of the day in the, in the Roman Empire, they they lord it over. They, they love to give commands. They're a bit bossy. They are a bit bossy. But Jesus said that true greatness is in service. It's in being a servant. Boys and girls, who here wants to be great at something? Who wants to be great? What do you want to be great at? What do you want to be great at? Football, you want to be great at football. That's a good one to be great at. What do you want to be great at? What is it? Gymnastics. Ooh, brilliant. Brilliant. What do you want to be great at? Gymnastics as well. Well, I want to be great at drawing. I want to be great at painting. I went to Sam's house and he has lovely, lovely paintings and so he's, and pictures, and so he's, he's inspired me to be an artist. I want to be an artist. So let me practice my skills on somebody. Who wants to be my volunteer? I'll go from someone. You want to be my volunteer? Okay. I'm sorry about this, but um, what's your name? Maisie. Maisie, good to meet you, Maisie. Well, I'm going to draw a picture of Maisie. If you could count down 15 seconds... Starting from now. Three, three, 
ready? Are you ready for, for my art? <laughs> what do you think? Is it good? Not many people could probably see that, to be honest. But this is a painting or a drawing of Maisie. <laughs> what do you think, Maisie? Do you want it? I don't know if you do want it, but I wouldn't take it. But you can take it if you want. I mean, if you keep that for 10 years and you sell that on whenever I'm famous, <laughs> that'll be worth a lot. You can get it in the end if you want. I'm not a very good artist because it takes great, what, what greatness takes is to devote your whole life to something. You have to devote your whole life to football or to, to art or to gymnastics in order to become great at it. But Jesus teaches to truly be great, to be a great person. You have to follow him. You have to devote your whole life to him. Jesus, he wasn't like the rulers of the day. The, the ruler of the day is a man called Tiberius. He, uh, I'll tell you a story about Tiberius. He was a, he was a very harsh, a very harsh ruler. He was a, a Roman emperor and he, uh, he, he, he was very, very mean, very, very bossy at times. And so he didn't really follow the teaching of, of Jesus. He was in a great position, but he wasn't a great man. I'll tell you a story about Tiberius. So Tiberius, he, he was on an island, and so a fisherman from the island, he, he, uh, he, he caught a huge, massive fish. If you could put the, yes, he caught this massive fish. See the size of that fish. The fisherman caught it, and so he thought he would bring this to the emperor as a gift. He thought he would give it as a, as a gift. And so the fisherman climbed up this big hill all the way up. He clambered up until he reached the Roman emperor who was on his own. He was having a rest. And the Roman emperor, he didn't know, Tiberius, he didn't know he was coming. So the fisherman, he came up to him, and when Tiberius saw this beast of a fish, he jumped. He was startled. He was afraid. And he called, guards! And the guards came, and Tiberius punished this fisherman because he scared him. He was mean. But what he did, he, he, he hit him with the fish, and he rubbed his face against the fish. It was very, very, very painful, very, very sore, and he was very mean. And the fisherman, he probably should have known better, but he said, well, thank goodness I didn't bring the crab I caught. And so what did Tiberius do? He got his guards to go back down the hill and to get this big crab. And I'll tell you what he did with the crab, but I don't think the fisherman would have survived. Tiberius, he was a very cruel ruler, he was a very mean ruler and he wasn't a fan of this the harmless joke. The Bible's full of stories of great rulers though, of great leaders even. You, we've heard about Moses today who was a, 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 a great leader. He was a great servant of the Lord and we'll hear about Joshua uh, in Holiday Bible Club who was, a, who was a great servant of the Lord. But there's an even better servant of the Lord. His name is Jesus. And Jesus, he was the servant of the Lord who was promised long ago. And how he served his people was by dying for them. He served his people by dying for them, by dying on the cross. And as we read earlier, this was what he said. He, he did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Boys and girls, Jesus was, was truly great. He was truly great. He wasn't like Tiberius. He didn't rule harshly, but he rules by kindness, and he rules and serves by love. We can be a bit like Tiberius, though, can't we? We can be a bit bossy at times. We can be a bit proud of ourselves. Or we can, you know, if we we're asked to help out with the dishes or help out at home, sometimes we can we can just blow up in, in anger because that's not what we want to do. We, we 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 want to do whatever we want to do. 
But Jesus, our master, he's not bossy. He's good and he's fair, but he's also forgiving and he's, he knows us and he rules by love and he is also our friend. Jesus is the greatest friend and king we could ever want. And if we want to be called great, boys and girls, if we want to be called great, this means not being bossy or it means not being controlling, but gladly helping out others, and being kind to others and following Jesus wholeheartedly through our life. Thank you for listening so, so well. And Maisie, if you want your picture, you can, you can come and get it, but I don't blame you if you don't want it. Brilliant. Thank you, James, for talking to us about a different type of being great. That was really helpful and for all of us to think a wee bit about this morning what it really means to be truly great as we follow Jesus. Now, we're going to sing together, and then after that, um, we'll get Sunday school prizes given out. We're going to sing, Father, I place into your hands. We're going to stand as we sing, and then after that, um, in quick succession, the, the Sunday school teachers of each age group will give out um, prizes to their classes. So let's stand as we sing together, Father, I place into your hands. seats together. Um, oh yeah. Some of the Sunday school teachers are going to help us at this stage. Julia, sorry, Julie, Pamela and Molly um, are going to do the first set of prizes for nursery and P1. So guys, come on ahead, yeah, work away. Um, and if you want to... Oh, sorry, the, the, the screen is catching a few...
<laughs> great, super, thank you girls, great job. Right, now P2 to 3, Sarah and Charlene. Brilliant, come on ahead guys. <coughs> Great job. And then we've our P fours and fives and Gail and Lynn. P6s, um, Lindsay. Peace sevens. Jackson. Isaac. Matthew. Sam. Emily. Sophia. So that's all our um, nursery through the upper end of primary school. Um, but, oh look, we're still getting caught in Joshua's tripwire. Double own trouble. You let go that wee second and I'll try and pull that out of the way because I don't think Johnson would like to go over a trip over there. <laughs> so our, our Bible class and um, our secondary school age young people, we have a rota of helpers, which is great. Um, thank you to all who are involved in that way. Um, one of those is Johnson and he has got um, Bible class prizes. Thanks, Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. 
So those of you who have uh, children who have not got their books today, if you want to collect them, I'm here for them. Uh, we also give out Bibles to our neighbours. And uh, we have ribbons on here. Before I do that, can I just say that could I thank you, the parents, for sending their children along to Bible class? It's important. Uh, I know school is compulsory and children attend, but I would argue that Bible class is actually more important, so it is important that your child attend. So I thank you for that and your cooperation. Uh, can I also thank Sam as little to the thank Sam Bingham, William Dunn, Reuben Lucas, Heather Evans, Johnny and Hannah Pollock for their work with the Bible class. I appreciate it. When we give out the Bibles every year, we give what we consider to be one of the most precious gifts we can give, the Word of God. It turned Europe upside down four or five centuries ago. Sadly, the lack of it could be reversing that. So I commend everybody to read the Bible. And that's the most precious gift we give from the Bible class ribbon. That's what she said. Thank you to all the teachers, and um, not just for sorting out and organising, giving out prizes there now, but for the work that you do week on week. We really appreciate it. And what Johnson said at the end, um, this is the challenge of our lives to bring our boys and girls up, to hear God's word, to hear of his great love for them. And to encourage them that this matters more than anything else in life. And we really do encourage you to keep encouraging your children. Um, I, I am excited at the prospect of all. You imagine five years from now, six years from now, seven years of month from now, all these guys are near secondary school age. And um, what a, an answer to prayer it would be to see them filling all these chairs and pews and down the line in the future with their wives and husbands doing the same in the years that I have. Thank you for coming to join with us. I'm going to pray, and then after that, James and I are going to have to go for Red Rock um, for, I'm not going to say a <coughs> performance, it'll be something different there, but can we encourage you um, to go through to the hall and get some great drink there and enjoy each other's company. And thank you for coming along and um, to be here with the boys and girls this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your kingdom is an upside down kingdom. It's not the way the world works. Different sort of greatness. What kind of greatness can this be? We chose to be made so. Father, we thank you that as we put our trust in you, you give us something greater and more worth than all the treasure and fun and greatness that the world can offer. And so we pray that today as we enjoy some of the great together. And as we journey on through the, the weeks that lie ahead of us, Father, help us to be people listening 